Hi ladies, welcome to your Activate Her Chapter meeting. It's hard to believe that we are coming to the end of this Restore theme, isn't it? I know. Oh my gosh. All these months have gone by. I know. It's been crazy how fast. But I have absolutely loved getting to know, I, I guess digging into the dirt a little bit, the soil of a kingdom identity and mm -hmm. really unpacking it and looking at what is required of us as kingdom daughters. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so in the mind, just the, sp the intentional mind shift. It's yeah. Been, it's been really helpful. Yeah, oh, for sure, absolutely. Um, we still have much to learn about who we are in Christ though, and so I don't see us like ever moving away from this. Mm -hmm. I think we're always gonna be looking at how we can better step into that place of kingdom identity. And this month, we are going to dig into a topic that is a hard topic. It's a topic of sacrifice. And the question that we are going to ask is, are we called to live a sacrificial life? And if so, how do we do that? When we think about the life that someone lived as a sacrifice, who do you automatically think of? We think of Jesus. You think of Jesus. You go to Jesus. He offered himself on the cross. He was the sacrifice for our sins. And then you think of his father who sacrificed his one and only son. Mm -hmm. But the interesting thing is while we were preparing for this mm -hmm. teaching, mm -hmm. it really hit us that Jesus was God's one and only son. And Jesus and God had, was a team effort mm -hmm. to say, I'll go, I'll pay the price for the sins. But... There was another person right. involved who in can, this. Who we can identify with. Who we can absolutely identify with, and her name was Mary. And their sacrifice that they did was also going to be Mary's sacrifice mm -hmm. as well. Mm -hmm. And that really about did me in, you know, as I thought about that. So our verse for this month is from the book of Hebrews, chapter 13. And the author of Hebrews writes, for here, which they're talking about the here and now, where we are right now, we have no lasting city, but we seek the city that is to come. So they are seeking what is before us, the city that Jesus is going to build, mm -hmm. right? Through him, through Jesus, let us continually offer up a sacrifice of praise to God that is the fruit of our lips, acknowledging his name. And do not neglect to do good and to share what you have. For God is pleased with such sacrifices. So how does my living a sacrificial life put God on display to those around me? This is going to be a great conversation as we explore how we can hashtag restore sacrifice. So as we look at sacrifice, let's look at the definition. The definition of sacrifice is an act of offering to a deity something precious, to suffer a loss of, to give up, to renounce, to injure, or to destroy, especially for an ideal belief or an end. And I, the, the part of that that we really identified with was the act of an offering to a deity of something precious. Yeah. Yeah, we, we, that we really... That really resonated with us. Yeah. In his letter to the Romans, we read, as Paul pleads for those who are reading his words, to give their bodies to God because of all he has done for them. Let them present their bodies as a living and holy sacrifice, the kind that he will find acceptable. This is truly a way to worship him. Yeah. It occurred to us that Mary was really the first to offer her body as a living sacrifice to host the King of Kings. And she was to do this while living in a culture where honor and shame meant everything. It is really astounding because in, in that culture, for God to ask Mary to do something that would bring such shame, it just did, it didn't yeah. really make sense because it was, honor was just, that honor was the, was the thing that mm -hmm. every family just revered. Yep. And yep. if you didn't have it, it, it would, it didn't play out well for you in society. So yeah, think about so. the fact that in the laws, it, it you know it could bring stoning. Mm -hmm. Yeah, 
Yeah. So Mary's entire family would have felt the shame of her pregnancy. Mm -hmm. And what drives our own shame in this season? I mean, we, you know, we can identify, Yeah. you know, so, but. Um, <laughs> we may not be stoned, but people still throw stones. They do. You're right. They do. They do. And um, so in the scripture, Luke um, chapter one, we have Mary's hymn of praise. And in, so in the midst of all he was asking of her and the cost that it was going to mean for her, her heart was that he had done great things for her. Yeah. So um, I'll just read it just because it's beautiful. Um, oh, how my soul praises the Lord. How my spirit rejoices in God, my Savior. For he took notice of this lowly servant girl. And from now on, all generations will call me blessed. For the mighty one is holy, and he has done great things for me. He shows mercy from generation to generation to all who fear him. His mighty arm has done tremendous things. He has scattered the proud and the haughty ones. He has brought down princes from their thrones and exalted the humble. He has filled the hungry with good things and sent the rich away with empty hands. He has helped his servant Israel and remembered to be merciful. For he made this promise to our ancestors, to Abraham and his children forever. Yeah, it is a beautiful prayer and it sounds wonderful in the moment that she's experiencing with God. I mean, I've had some pretty incredible moments in my prayer closet with the Lord mm -hmm. and then I've had to step out and face reality. <laughs> you know, there's yeah. people out there who are going to question this and who are going to really ponder what she's going through and what happened to her and why. And because they won't have all the pieces. They won't have all the pieces. They won't have the parts to the story. And when she shares that story, then you have to really trust that she hasn't lost her mind. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. um, the reality of human existence kicks in and in the natural, it's very hard to walk out this intense cost that Mary is going to have to um, endure. Mm -hmm. You know, she, the angel came and said, you're highly favored. Well, she was not in the natural highly favored person. She was a teenager. Mm -hmm. True. She was a woman mm -hmm. and she was from Galilean descent. Those, th those were three strikes in her social standing. She was not highly favored when it came to the public. Mm -hmm. opinion of her but but she was highly favored in the spiritual in the spiritual look at what God picks and I, I think that one thing that I just want to say here too is that we can eliminate ourselves because of public opinion mm, true but yet that doesn't eliminate what God has called you to do and so in that in this moment you know the cost of God's plan for Mary was going to be intense Mm -hmm. And her family was going to walk through that uh, cost mm -hmm. and that sacrifice with her. But she offered that sacrifice of praise. That's what we're looking at right there is mm -hmm. the, from the Hebrews, you know, offer the sacrifice of praise. And that's exactly what Mary did. Mm -hmm. She used the fruit of her lips. She acknowledged his name that he had done great things for her. And then she rejoiced in her lowly state. She rejoiced in her lowly state. I don't rejoice in my lowly state. <laughs> but she was she could see the picture and was so honored that God would choose her for such a divine purpose. For sure. That to me is is amazing. And we don't know all of the dynamics of this moment for her, but we do recognize that this ask of God was huge. And it was going to come with a very high price tag. Mm -hmm. So what would happen in our own lives if rather than viewing a sacrifice through the lens of loss and death and grief to what ourselves, we looked at God's ask through this lens of gratitude and acknowledged him as you are doing yeah. great things for me, for me. This sacrifice is great for me. I offer this sacrifice to you for your glory. Every sacrifice has a purpose for our good and his glory. Mm -hmm. And in my own life, when my daughter and her husband 
came to us and sat down and said that they wanted to move south, I knew in that moment that it was a sacrifice, that it was a cost that Pat and I had to endure. And I didn't endure it gracefully. I didn't say, you've done great things for me. I said, why are you doing this to me? <laughs> why can't I have one set of kids here and living close by? Why do all of our kids have to go south? And then I was like, kind of afraid that that meant if they go south, we're going to go south. Is God going to move us south? And he said, no, I'm not. So right there is another sacrifice that, you know, we got to lay on the table mm -hmm. and say, okay, God, well, I trust that there is a plan and a purpose. And, you know, it's, it hasn't always been, I still cry. <laughs> I still cry yeah. over it when they're in a hard are, place, yeah. mm -hmm. you know, that, and we still pack up and go. And I say, why do we have to do all this driving? Yeah. But, and that's a sacrifice. That's a sacrifice. Yeah. So you understand well, then, when Mary is told a sword will pierce your own soul yeah. as well. You understand the, the, the prick of the sword yes. when uh, in that sacrifice. Yeah. But Jesus' life was going to be out of the norm. And with that would come moments of sacrifice within his family, especially his mom. If you are a mother, he, we, you can imagine it. You know, We're told Mary pondered and treasured all these things in her heart. So we kind of wonder, what are some of the questions she would have had? You know, did she wonder if Jesus was king of the Jews right. on earth? Did she think he, was, he had come to fulfill his reign on earth like so many other people had hoped was the case? Or did she, was she aware from the beginning that more was going to be asked of her? Mm -hmm. She watched her son die a horrible death. He was falsely accused, and beaten, and tortured, Awful. nailed him to the cross. And again, a mother's heart holding her son's purpose loosely in her hands. I love that thought. It's like we, and that's why we have to, you know, that's what we do as parents, right? We just, we hold our children's destinies loosely in our hands. Mm -hmm. As mothers, though, it takes an incredible amount of faith to kind of just lay our lives out there and offer them to Christ and to God for his service. Yeah. Like, you know, to just, and I've, I had a couple of those moments in my raising ears you know yeah it's oh like yeah when you know you pray the prayer it's like okay lord that's that prayer of trust it's like whatever you have to do you know yeah for to just, sit back and watch mm -hmm. when you know they're outside of god's purpose and mm -hmm. god's got to bring them back somehow yeah yeah i think this is an area where we can easily overstep and we try to protect or interject mm -hmm. ourselves into our kids' lives or other people's lives to try to protect them or stand up for them and defend them. And, you know, we have to work out our purpose with the Lord and walk according to what it is he's teaching mm -hmm. us. And they're going to have to do the same. Mm -hmm. And we, I mean, like you said, it's definitely not an easy thing to, to pray the prayer and then say, okay, Lord, whatever you have to do mm -hmm. to bring them back to you. Yeah, Go and, ahead and do it. Right. And to have to watch them suffer. Yeah. Knowing it's it's the better way. Yeah. Right? Yeah. These are, but, you know, we've talked a lot about this this year. These are the moments that when we need to make sure that we're looking through the right lens. We've talked all year about the contrast mm -hmm. between our kingdom identity, where we consider the good of all, and our empire mindset. Yep. Which is all about self. Yep. Now, when self is our lens, we may find that offering what is precious to me is going to be too high of a cost. Yep. You know, it, the time, the pressure, the peace, and like just the stress of it all, yeah. you know, is, is when it, when we're looking at it through the lens of self, that can just, that it's a high price to pay. Yeah. It's a, and like, like sitting, like do like, let's talk about what we're doing here. This yeah. is, a, this is the price we pay. <laughs> and some days it's a higher price than others. <laughs> um, but, um, but yeah, but you know, just, and it's not just sitting in front of the camera when you'd rather be behind the scenes. It's like helping to formulate a teaching and communicate a teaching when you're just not a teacher, you know, and I, that's how I, I find myself in that place. And when I'm empire focused in those moments, it's so frustrating, not only to me, but to my dear friends. You know? <laughs> <laughs> she sits here and waits for me to spit the words out, <laughs> you know, but when I can stay kingdom focused and I understand better you know, the purpose of it, then yeah. it's a whole different experience. Yeah. For sure. Yeah, absolutely. 
so many times we find ourselves not willing to pay the price. Like maybe it's not even a conscious decision. You know, we just, we go about our lives and we don't realize that, you know, when we cling to our time and our money and our possessions, or even the not so great things of insecurity and emotional pain and resentment, you know, even those things become comfortable after time, you yeah. know, and, and we don't want to pay the price and, and offer the offerings to bring ourselves out of those places. And then I think, too, we can overstep and decide what sacrifice should look like mm -hmm. when there's chaos all around me and I'm feeling the pressure because someone didn't show up and do what I thought they should do in the timing that I thought they should be there. Yeah, that's, you know, that's. I see it's a big it's a big deal in my <clears throat> in my life. So compulsion leads us to create our own agenda and idea of acceptable sacrifices. And this is what happened to Moses when he went up the mountain and did not return on the people's timetables. We allow the pressure of time and trust to cause us to step into comfort in the natural, but not keeping in mind the spiritual. And right. And then we're far from that purpose. Yeah, and compulsion is a good word to use because that is exactly what got the Israelites into trouble when Moses was up there. You know, Moses is in a conference call. He's having a meeting with God up there. Got his tablets. You know, he's, he's, he's learning all about the kingdom. Mm -hmm. And the people decided that he didn't respond quick enough. So they made a calf. And we learned in Acts chapter 7 says that they made a calf in those days, offered sacrifices to the idol, and rejoiced in the works of their own hands. Mm -hmm. So I think a fair question that we need to ask ourselves is what works have we made with our own hands mm -hmm. that we sit back and we rejoice over? What have we allowed to become our own golden calf? Mm -hmm. Because we're not willing to wait no, that's a good question. And also another question that came up as we kind of mulled over these things, it's like, what do we sacrifice without even recognizing the cost to our spiritual health or our physical health? Or, you know, what what things do we lay out there without even recognizing it that they're going to cause us to have to sacrifice in the future? There are sacrifices that we make that we don't even know there was a cost until it's years too late yeah. to, to do anything about it. And um, I th that's a huge question that we don't have to, t we can't, we don't have time to like dig into that question here. And there, and another question that we came up with that we really don't have time to really consider in the, in the, in the fullness of really how we, of what God could draw out of us if we were to ask it. It, and, and that question is, what have we sacrificed because we don't acknowledge to one another what our needs are, like in a personal relationship with mm -hmm. each other, you know, if we do not have the kind of relationship where we can express our authentic needs to one another, you right. know, there's sacrifices being made in, in who you are and who you were created to be and how God wants to use you. So yeah. huge questions that, you know, that that's when we say sacrifice is a big topic. Like it is. There you yeah. go so many places, but yeah. the whole conversation makes me think about what God has recently shown me about myself. And, and we've talked a little bit about it, all of it already. And it's like, I absolutely have the tendency to be impatient and work for the Lord out of the obligation and the compulsion place. And I realized that recently um, that it, the, the basis of that is a trust issue. It's a mm -hmm. trust. I don't, do I not trust him the way, right. he, the way I should trust him? He's been so faithful to me, but have I been faithful to him in that place of, of trust? And I've had a hard time waiting and resting in God's grace for a situation. So I'll take it into my own hands, like we talked about. And and into my own timing and offer the sacrifice in my own way and in my own strength. So, and I end up exhausted and frustrated. And I've realized that I've made my works mm -hmm. into that idol, that golden calf, instead of make a love offering yeah. to my Lord. Yeah. You know, so that's, that's, that's huge. It's tough. Yeah. I was thinking, look, God's probably saying, you're exhausting me. <laughs> yeah. You know, you're exhausted, but you're exhausting me. It doesn't have to be like this, right? For sure. You no, know? I know. I know. So, so what do we do then? How do we know? How do we know 
How do we really know deep within if something that we have has become an idol of our worship? Mm -hmm. How do we know that? Mm -hmm. What would you say is a good indicator that it has become more than it God ever intended? Well, I think one good indicator would be to ask yourself what your response would be if God began to press on you to give this thing up or to give it away. You know, how does your flesh feel at the thought of removing whatever that is in, from your life? Right. That would be a good question to ask yourself. Yeah, when we talked about this before, I, I had an image <clears throat> in my mind of the seagulls from the movie Finding Nemo and how they used to fly around. They'd go, mine, 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 <laughs> mine. I, they, I got such a kick out of them, but that's what came to my mind immediately, you know, and I, and I was thinking, well, how many times have I been the seagull? Going, no, that's mine. That's mine. That's mine. That's mine. That's mine. Yeah, yeah. And when God asks to give it, asks you if you can give it up, it's like, oh, nope, it's mine. It's mine. It's mine. It's mine. It's, mine. it's, mine. it's you know, it, it, it's, it's yours. You're not going to let go of it. Right. Um, okay, so next question. <laughs> yeah. What might God require of us as a sacrifice if we are to serve him in holiness and righteousness, like the scripture. Right. Yeah. And who are we willing to sacrifice on our own altar for the sake of convenience? Sometimes that can play out, I know, in my own life. I might sacrifice people mm -hmm. because it's inconvenient for me to help or intercede or do whatever, mm -hmm. you know, I got my timetable, I guess, you know, <laughs> and if you're not a part of that goal for the day, then I might sacrifice you instead of saying, letting God um, interrupt my day, mm -hmm. you know, and, sure. and that's because I can be so forward focused and I got to get this done. You know, I want to become someone who's more able to allow God to interrupt my day. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, absolutely. And I'm definitely like that too. And, and also like the, in like my deal is like the whole altar of performance. It's like, you know, getting the, and cause you, you got your list and you want to get yep. that list done and it's for his purposes, not mine, yep. you know? So, yep. so it's that altar of performance too, you know? Absolutely. And I think another area that we as women have to be really aware of is that sometimes we're willing to offer sacrifices rather than doing the work to lay down offenses. At the altar, you know, we can, we, we will, we will take on an offense and we will let it fester and, and yeah. rather than fix it, mm -hmm. th we'll sacrifice the friendship Yeah, sometimes because it's more, it's just, it's easier. Right. And it's also, if you're married, it's very easy, I think, these days to offer, to sacrifice our marriages instead of allowing God to show us how to serve one another mm -hmm. out of love and in love. Not always having to be right, not always, and it goes back to what you're saying too about the offense. You know, if I get offended at Pat, then I'm mad at him for the day, you know, and I've wasted a day being mad and angry and, mm -hmm. you know. That's a sacrifice. Yeah. Yeah. And finances too are another area, you know, can we lay down our self-control and, you know, do we lay down our self-control? Do we, and do we have the sacrifice of discipline <laughs> when it right. comes to finances, you know, because especially these days when you can click, 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 and you've got everything at your doorstep in a day or two, you know? Yeah. Um, so finances are another area that, um, you know, we can sacrifice. Yeah. There's a quote. I, I don't know who said it, um, but it said you can, uh, you'll have the pain of discipline or the pain of regret. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I think that we all can relate to that in so many different yeah. areas. Especially you know? in the financial part. Especially yeah. in the financial for area. Sure. And um, another place that we thought of for sacrifice is when we're willing to throw people under the bus because for, um, for someone like me, who has had a hard time coming out of a place of shame for mistakes. If I feel as though a mistake is something, you know, that, oh, that's like a personal thing, 
and it bothers me so much. You know, it can be easy to throw people under the bus and pass, you know, but you, mm-hmm. that whole but you did mm-hmm. or but you said, mm-hmm. and then I'm throwing someone else under the bus instead of just sacrificing my own pride, you know, my own uh, need to defend myself. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It's I mean, a sacrifice. It's a sacrifice to mm-hmm. let go of that. Mm-hmm. For sure. Saying yes to serving God in holiness and righteousness certainly has a cost. Remember Mary. Mary. Yeah. It's a partnership with God. We step over into this relationship and say, whatever gets in the way of our relationship, the, the vertical relationship, and your purpose and plan, Lord, then if there's something there, whatever's there, move it out of the way. Our scripture today even tells us, do not neglect to do good and to share what you have for God is pleased with such sacrifices. And Jesus made it clear that there was going to be a cost to following him. He spoke of bearing your own cross. And when he said that, the people sitting around him in that moment, they may have been looking out at the crosses that people had to carry uh, as a form of their own punishment being crucified on a cross. The Romans were very intentional when it came to the execution of criminals. We imagine that they, you know, were far away, but from what I've read and my understanding is the crosses were eye level along a walkway. People would walk by and see the corpses laying there. When Jesus could not bear his own cross, even his disciples weren't around to help him. They, the Roman soldiers pulled in a bystander to come and help him. The, his disciples, those who swore they would never leave him or forsake him, were nowhere to be found in that moment when he was going to be executed. And cost equals sacrifice. And sacrifice then equals an offering. Are we willing to sacrifice or offer that which, according to the definition, that which is precious to me. Are we willing to offer that which is precious to me? Sometimes what's been precious to me is the wall of self-protection. I feel protected by a hurt or a need to control. But sacrifice through the lens of kingdom identity is God testing Abraham with Isaac. This long-awaited and promised child, what? That doesn't make any sense at all. I've had long-awaited dreams that that God, I felt were in the moment, and God has said, are you willing to lay it on the altar of sacrifice? And I've had to let it go because it wasn't really fixed, and it wasn't shaped quite like God intended. The kingdom mindset is all about Jesus. What is going to bring him glory? Mm -hmm. Yes. Like Mary laid down her life to be God's maidservant, Jesus laid down his life. And like Jesus, we lay down our life. Yeah. What does that, what does that look like? What does laying down your life look like? Romans 12, 1 says, I appeal to you, therefore, brothers, by the mercies of God, to present your bodies as a living sacrifice holy and acceptable to God, which is your spiritual worship. We are asked to lay down our life, to lay it down on the altar, not sacrifice the life of others for the sake of our own comfort and pleasures. We're to let go of pride when we need to. We need to apologize. Scripture tells us that if when you are offering your gift at the altar and then you remember that your brother has a grievance against you, leave your gift at the altar and go. First, make peace with your brother and then come back and present your gift. Yeah, that's, I mean, that's huge because we think about God wanting a sacrifice, but he'd rather that we be right with one another Mm -hmm. before we offer the sacrifice. Mm -hmm. Put people first. Yeah. Really. Let go of, yeah. Put the people first. Let go of the things we need to let go of. Yeah. And make things right. Yep. And then come back. And then come and make the sacrifice. Yeah. That's such a good reminder. Mm -hmm. And be a giver. God loves a cheerful giver. Don't withhold what you're able to give. Um, Recently, you know, we were asked to open our home for a family of four that the closing on a house fell through. And 
at the time, Pat and I were like, is this the right time? Really, God? Right Kristen now? might ask that question, too. She might have asked that question, too. <laughs> really? <Are> you? <laughs> like, what? <laughs> what? But you know what? It was the right time to do it because it has been, we, it's brought us joy. Mm-hmm. And it's brought us um, a, a relationship. You know, it's built a, a relationship. And so um, mm-hmm. it, it's, it's never the wrong time. To say yes to the Lord. If it's, yeah, when it's the Lord. When it is the Lord. Mm -hmm. Yep. And um, I love this quote from F.F. Bosworth. Uh, He said, the sacrifice of praise and the giving of thanks is continually done in the faith realm. Mm -hmm. This is before our blessings have been changed into their visible form. So the sacrifice of thanks when it's hard, the sacrifice of praise when we don't see it, we may not see it. But we can sure speak it in the faith realm. So Mm -hmm. we have to make sure that we're not willing to sacrifice friendships and relationships unless they're unhealthy for us. And then we don't sacrifice the people on the on the on the (laughs) altar of Facebook. That's good. We don't sacrifice people. Mm -hmm. What we do is we hold relationships loosely and when they're unhealthy and they're out of season then we offer it to the Lord and we say I'm giving this relationship to you as a sacrifice because it's going to be hard for me mm-hmm. to transition and to let it go and let him let him do what he's going to do with it but let's not sacrifice people mm-hmm. right. publicly yeah. I don't know that we have to do that no we should, no Jesus would not. I don't Jesus think so. Never did. No. <clears throat> Here we are at the activation plan. Jesus said, "Earthly attachments must be set aside if we are to do the work of the kingdom." In this season, what might God be asking you to sacrifice on the altar of offerings? What is, and this is a great time of year to ask this question, let, what is your expectation of gift giving? You know, is he asking you to readjust your, you know, your normal spending or giving habits around Christmas and so that we're not overindulging like we talked about earlier? Where we're not like overspending so much that we dread January, February mm-hmm. when the bills come in. For sure. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And what about our pace? Are you willing to maintain peace by slowing down your pace? If you're saying, oh, I'm just so busy. I'm just so busy. I'm just so busy. Mm -hmm. Well, we don't have to set that pace. There are busy seasons, of course. Mm -hmm. But don't step into the rushed or pushed place to get everything done. What are some things that God says that you've just been doing that because you're it's a habit or it's tradition, right? but you can let it go. Yeah. And it, that comes down to just really, let's reevaluate our commitments, you know, yep. as it pertains to the season, you know, are we overcommitted? Are there things that we need to say no to Yeah, so that we don't find ourselves in that pace? Right. That's true. So then the plan is to really spend some time in prayer. Let's take a look at some of those earthly attachments that we hang on to. What is he asking us to let go of? When he gives you a nudge and reveals that place that has really, in all honesty, become an idol to you, then we're asking that you write it down and ask him to show you the steps to lay it down at the altar. Yeah, that is really going to take some quiet time, some intentional time. Mm -hmm. And then ask him to show you what is the one thing that is so precious to you that he's actually been asking you to give to him. You know he's been asking you to lay it on the altar and let him take it from you. That pain that pricks at your heart. Jesus said that what is highly prized among men is utterly detestable in God's sight. Are you prizing something that God finds detestable? You may want to offer it as a sacrifice to God. You lay it down, 
then you pick it back up again. It hurts too much to let it go because you're so wounded by it. You're so used to it. It's become comfortable. It's something that you've carried around for a long time. And what would you do without it, right? It's that hurt. It's that pestering voice. It's the, it's the, that thing that you know God has said, I'll take that from you, but it's too hard to let it go. You are surrounded by women who are safe and willing to help you. They'll walk to the altar with you. They want to share the load with you. They'll, they'll help carry it. You can trust them to listen and then walk with you to that altar and help release it. I just really feel like this could be a really holy moment for a lot of women mm -hmm. in your chapter meetings as you, as you talk about things that nobody else knows how hard it was. Nobody else knows how painful it was to go through. Nobody else knows or you feel like they don't understand or would never understand. But I feel like this could just be such a holy moment mm -hmm. and it could bring about such freedom. If you were to take that thing that's been precious to you and you were to say, this is precious to me, but I know God's asking me to let it go. And I'm, I'm willing to do that. Can you help me let it go? Uh, you know, we can follow Mary's example to yeah. hashtag restore sacrifice. Yeah. Have a great discussion. Have a great discussion, girls. We'll see you next month.